Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad down here, Premier Leather Crafters, and I know this kind of seems like back to back with the videos, but I promise a lot of times I'm doing these in the same day because the the information or whatever keeps coming in or the ideas keep coming in. So it's not necessarily so much as the information, but it's the ideas that keep coming in. And again, this is spawning off of another chat that was going on involved in the one of the the leathers gill um and a guy was asking questions about this um particular tool now the particular tool that he was talking about is called a dragon scale and there are tools that are out there that you can purchase the dragon scale tool one i think the guy's name is sergey Nentrioski M something guys from uh I mean he's from over across seas his name is like this long you know like 13 letters with a, and they don't really match according to the the English language but the guy does make some great tools and what I love about his tools is the head or the actual base of the tool is made from brass so you can over a period of time of using them over a repeated time. You can just take you a a uh, fine uh, either file or I've seen some people even actually take the head of a pen and just clean out all of the carbon deposits uh, or the calcium deposits, not carbon, but calcium deposits from the leather itself, and you can clean that up. You can do that with a lot of your tools, even with tools that you buy here in the U.S. from Tandy Weaver. Uh, um, high crafters, maverick, anybody. You can take just a, 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 a pen, a straight pen, and you can just clean out a lot of the um, the channels or the cuts that's in there. For instance, let me guys show you real quick before we get off into this video about the dragon scale. See like my camouflage tool here. Now, I, there's no way to sharpen these. And over a period of time, after repeated pounding and pounding and pounding, you can look at that, and some people will say, oh, man, that's smooth right there. Or you don't want to turn this camouflage tool into a bevel tool. So the way to do that, or the way to fix that, and it's very simple, and it's all about, uh, a, again, I should do this in the same contest as doing these videos, knowing your tools, but you can take you a regular straight pin. Now, this is one of my stitching pins um, uh, that I use to stitch my pieces with, and I'll take this, and I'll just go right down the channel of each one of these with a, a, this fine pin, well, not even a fine pin. It's kind of like a blunt tip. But you just go on, you just want to take that pen and run down each one of these channels. And you can see some of the stuff that's coming off right there. That's calcium deposits. You got, yeah, that, now you can see it. The tip of that, that's calcium deposits from the leather. And the more that you use that, you, you use your tools, you'll start to get some of these in here. And most people will think that it's, it's dulling the tool or the tool is dulling, but it's actually these little calcium deposits that are filling up the little um, cuts or markings in your tool. And you can keep those, clean those out just with a regular straight pen. So that's a separate tip that we'll go into on another video. And you clean that out on a lot of your tips, uh, your tools, uh, even your basket weaving tool, whatever tool you have, just get your regular straight pen or one of your stitching pens and just clean that out. And even after that, if it gets to the point to where you can't see those lines anymore or the channels anymore cut into your tools, then you can come back with a fine hacksaw blade, which would be a different video later on down the road, and that's more or less off into modifying your tools. Because a lot of tools that I buy from Tandy in these places, they don't do exactly what I desire for them to do. So I'll go in with a little modification, and then you get enough into band saws and uh, uh, belt sand belt sanders and things like that to try to even, especially when you get off into your bevelers, and you want that pitch to be angled a 
little bit more steep to give you a different roundness or filling in of your bevel work then you know a belt sander can do very well but then you have to have polishing sander belt and all that kind of stuff like that right now but we'll get off into that at later time but what i want to talk with you guys today about is uh, the question was come up well where can i find this dragon scale so a lot of people are off into the dragon scale and that's one thing that you'll learn in this leather industry uh or in this business culture whatever you you want to call it or however you want the style saying it but you will learn that some crafters there's very few that have original ideas i mean and most of us uh, and and even if you're a part of a leathers guild or a leathers group on facebook or any social media outlet you'll start to see a lot of people that, you know, they put this stuff out there for free because they want people to do it. And the more that people do the work, and I just going off into another video, if you're borrowing somebody else's idea, make sure you just give them the credit of where you got the idea from. But a lot of stuff that's come out there are free. They, they want people to use that. And, and and they'll keep giving you free stuff as long as you just make sure that you don't uh, plagiarize. That's the word that I was looking for. Ha! I knew I was smart in this old country tater. Plagiarize. You don't want to plagiarize anybody else's work. But here again, and again, I don't know if this is my idea alone. I don't know. My thing is not spending a lot of money to maximize my profits. And that's one thing that I do because there are so many tools that are out there that will copy and mimic the idea or the same type of tooling work that um, some of these high dollar tools that are out here, I'm gonna case my leather while I'm talking to you guys. Um, there's a lot of tools out here that's already in existence where you don't have to go out and spend 50 and $60 on a dragon scale tool. You don't. You can spend that $3 or that $4, 5 $6 or whatever type of discount you may be getting. If you're, if you're on Tandy, you could be in the gold club, the elite club or whatever, or you could be getting business discounts. And I'm pretty sure much all of the leather supply stores have that same type of uh, thing, you know, where you get some type of discount. But you don't have to go out there and spend 50, 30, 40, 50, 60. Some of these tools, man, they're like $60. You know, for one tool, you don't have to spend that if you have an array of the other regular tools. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to make a dragon scale out of your Vayner tool. Now there are several type of Vayner tools that I have, several different sizes, um, three actually. And this is another instance to where you're actually taking a tool and making something that that two particular tool wasn't designed or made for. So, and this is where we are. And I think I'm doing a lot of these videos to where that's that might be my wheelhouse just showing crafters what you can do with the tools you already have now these are three different vayner tools that i have three different sizes and you guys can see that three different shapes you can tell that so i can use any one of these vayner tools to do what i needed to do uh, or to make these dragon scales and that's what we're going to be doing is making dragon scales But let me give you guys a quick rundown and I'm a little bit more prepared today because I actually have uh, a Tandy's catalog to tell you what these Vayner tools are And I have my good old handy dandy glasses so I can finally see the numbers and letters on here But the tool that I'm going to be using today is the V. 412 and I'll assume that the V is for Vayner but we're going to be looking at the V412 I may even go off into the V405 just to show you a different size dragon scale and just to give it a little different texture I may even go into the V407 so that's the V405 the V407 and the V412 now, Tandy has several different Vayner tools that are out there, um, you, and they go anywhere from a V400 
all the way up to a V707. And uh, if you have a Tandy's catalog or a Tandy's book, you can look on uh, the new catalog. You can look on the page 72 and it'll have all of the veiners there. And I've even seen some smooth veiners that are out there. So there are some that don't have the grooves. Uh, let me see. Can you guys see that? Where they won't reveal the little groove marks in there. Uh, that one may be a better one to see. You guys can see that. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get started in what we're going to do because I want you guys to see exactly how this dragon scale thing works. And the, uh, as we get the tooling, you'll start to see how it's going to finish out. Now, again, there is a tool out there that is called the dragon scale stamp. And to get that to work right, there's actually three in order to, for them to work together. Uh, you have one that'll cover the center part of whatever piece you're working on that's going to go down the, your line. And then you have another smaller tool that doesn't have as many scales on it, a single uh, tool scale um, that goes on the opposite side of that stamp. And then you have another one that goes into the direct channel leading up to the border of your tool and work. So that way it's a nice even flow. But you guys can do the exact same thing with this one tool. And this is what we're gonna show you today. So let's get the camera angled right. And let me get ready to show you guys how we're going to do this. And I think you'll see. Man, and gentlemen, let's just drop this in right quick. Crafters get paid for your time. Now, I, yes, the Dragon Scale stamp would speed up time a lot. And it will make the work a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. But as for me, as my shop, my customers pay me for my time in the craftsmanship. And that's something that you might want to keep in the back of your mind is quick work doesn't necessarily mean better work. But sometimes you don't want to overshoot that either and take too long on a piece. And then the customers will lose their interest in their drive. They're only going to have that anticipation of seeing the finished product for so long. So depending on what you are making, spread your time out wisely. I mean, we know how long it takes to make a certain piece, you know, and, and, and I tell customers all the time, whether I'm doing a wallet or a belt, if I'm doing a wallet, okay, your wallet is going to take about three, maybe three to five days, depending on the detail that I put in there, because then I want my customers to see that I am actually dedicating that time. And when they see the finished product is very well worth the wait. So even doing this single stamp dragon scale, it is time consuming, but with my time properly proportioned out, customers will see that, okay, it was very well worth the wait. So let's get the camera angled right so you guys can see how we're going to do this. And let's get to work on the lighting. Now, first thing first is depending on whatever piece that you want to be working on. Actually, I'm going to move this. Uh, camera again because I want you guys to I'm going to set it down on my table I have a new slab that I'm working on working off of and this thing works out beautifully man this was probably about the best thing I ever could have spent money on but uh and you guys I'll show you guys at the end of this video my new marble slab which I am so very proud of glad that it came out wonderful all right, now is this going to stand up? Let's make this stand up to make sure it doesn't tilt over. Well, let's see. All right, there we go. Ha! Now we're cooking with Crisco, baby. Now we're cooking with Crisco. All right, so now, the first thing we're going to do is going to take our ruler. And it doesn't matter what piece that you're working on, but it be it a belt, be it a, uh, a wallet or purse or whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. You have to find the center of your piece that you're going to be working on and this is three and and a half inches so the center line to that three half of, half of three is one and a half so 
it's almost not quite four. So we're going to pull back just around right at two and a quarter. Well, let's make that a little bit interesting, a little bit better, give you some better information. And this is where having multiple measuring devices come in at. So if this is uh, two and a half, one and a quarter is going to be the center line. And I don't know why, why in the world did I say two? I have absolutely no idea. All right. So we find our center line. I'm going to come back. And now, again, I just want to do a light scribing just so I can see the line. I don't want the line to show up in my finished work. So I'm just going to scribe a light pencil line. You don't have to make that pencil line dark. You just want to have something very lightly, very lightly, not hard, just enough for me to see it. And that's all. And I'm going to start with my veining work. Now, the, the trick to this is you have to make sure that this tool is lined up every time before you stamp. So let's go here. And I'm going to get one side angled right, stamp that. I'm going to come back and I'm going to put the very end of this tool into the end of my stamp. Now that is very important and very crucial to know to put that right into the end of it so it'll look just like it's rounded off. You don't want to see those two end marks uh, in, into this piece. And I think you guys can see that. You want it to look like it's supposed to be one continuing oval shape. All right. Now, the next phase to this is I'm going to take that very same end and I'm going to put it right there on my line. And I'm going to spread this out again and make sure that I line it up with my, my first stamp line here. And the exact same thing over here. Just going to make sure that I line that up right. So now you should have this. And you can tell it's lined up on this side and it's lined up. I went a little bit far. I should have been raised up a little bit more. But I think we can work with that because we're going to fix that here. And we're just going to keep going up. Now, that messed it up. Again, that's why you want to make sure that it is perfectly lined up. That first mark, in any time that you're taking just one single stamp and doing work with, you want to make sure that that first one is done as close to perfect as you possibly can. As close to perfect as you possibly can. And this, now we're going to line this up here. And we're going to line this up here. There we go. And we're just going to keep... Now... The second part to this is once you've had a starting point like this here, now we're going to fill in our start filling in our scales here. So how do we do that? We're going to take this tool and we're going to go back on this side here and making sure that we line this up. And then we're going to turn this over the opposite direction and stamp there just like such. And you can start seeing our dragon scale start to form already. You can tell how it's going to, to come out. So I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way up the entire length of the piece. And we're gonna stamp again here. Make sure that you line it up. And then we're just gonna keep on stamping. And you're just gonna keep walking up the side of that piece. and making sure that you line those up before you commit. Once you stamp that in there, you commit it to it already. There's no way to get that out of there. So you just wanna make sure that it's lined up as close to perfect as you possibly can. And we're just gonna keep filling it in. Taking your time as always, like we always tell you with any other piece that you do, always take your time and see it before you actually get into in, into it, making sure that you continuously take your time. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to fill in the rest of it to where 
once you start getting to the edge of your piece, you can start filling in and covering up as if you had a border or an edge on there. Now, the thing is what you want to make sure with this, with doing this dragon scale, now you can see this. Now, this exact stamp, it is maybe not be as big. Um, you could probably, depending on the size of your project, you might want to go with a smaller veiner. And it will do the, you can do the exact same thing is to set this pattern up here. Now, as we start to get over to our channel of our border part, if this was a belt or a minimalist wallet or wallet or whatever, as we can start getting to the edge here, this is the trick to keep you from having to buy those three sets of tools. All you're going to do is lean this tool back a little bit toward the center of your piece. You don't want it to give you a full impression, but you want it to fade. A little bit you want it to fade and the way to get that fade is is to just lean that tool back just a little bit to where it's not giving a you're only going to give a half of that impression on this tool and then as you continue to go back toward the middle of it again then you can go back with your bold stamps and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how important it is to stay on target you see where you start to get a gap if you don't make sure that all of these are raised up. So this scale here should have been the same. Even though it appeared to be the same height as this one, it's a little bit off. So you have to take your time and make sure that all of your measurements are going to line up perfectly. But you get the, 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 the format of the dragon scale stamping work. Now you can go out there and spend six bucks. Uh, $60. I think they're $30 each. So that's $90 you'll spend for three stamps as opposed to just taking your time with one stamp and getting the same effect. And then as you get over here, like again, as you get over here to the border inside, then what you all you simply have to do then as you get close to your border is to follow that up with a little camouflaging tool and you let your camouflaging tool do exactly what it is called to do, camouflage. So you're camouflaging those edges around the border. And it's, this is why you want to just get part of that little fade. Because when you stamp into your border, it'll cover up that little, and it'll fade into your camouflage too like it's supposed to. You guys see that? That's what a camouflaging tool does. And you get that same dragon scale. So if this was a belt, your dragon scales can go with that same, with the veiner tool. This is done with a veiner. And if you wanted to make them a small dragon scale, then you just make them a small dragon scale. You can actually even change up the size on these if you want to. You can go from small to large. So if I was working on a... Um, a, a particular piece to where uh, I wanted some of my scales to be smaller or larger or w whatever the case may be, then uh, say like if it gets towards the tail, if I actually wanted to draw out a dragon and do this, uh, I can change the size of the scales by simply changing out the size of my veiner. And then it starts to get smaller as it gets around the tail tip of the tail or around the blessed breastplate of the dragon, which would actually mimic a real dragon scale. It some some scales are larger, some scales are smaller, depending on what part of the tail that it is. But hey, well, well now let's get back to it. Set my camera back up right. Get my light out of the way. But you guys have an idea of exactly how to copy the dragon scale stamp. That's how we do it, boys and girls. I'm going to tool the rest of this just to camouflage the rest of it so we can see exactly how this would look. If I decided to do this on a belt or a bracelet or whatever I decided to do, just to fill it in to give you guys an idea. And I went a little overboard on, the, uh, on one side. So, but think more or less as in this is the middle of the belt and you have that dragon scale pattern right there.
Now, this was done in 24 minutes, which it would be literally impossible if I was actually making this onto a sellable piece. I would take a lot more time than 24 minutes. And I probably, most likely, that would I probably, I most likely will run my lines down each one of the tips to make sure that everything will line up and stay consistently on my on my pitches on my with my banner too. That's one thing that is imperative, and it won't hurt at all. Period. If I was to just take that ruler and run another line up the points here, run one up the points there, run one up the points there, and it will all stay consistent. And you'll have the right height, the right arch, even the, when you flip that vayner tool over to make this little part here, it will all match and go the same exact way. Hey, 25 minutes giving you guys a new idea of knowing what your tools can do. And this is the dragon scale pattern with vayner tools.